run through everybody um, playing Schumann next week. So here is me going through it. I hope you enjoy. <laughs>
gonna use the orchestra tutti for your comments. Uh, uh, Lee is saying, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon back to you. And um, <laughs> yeah, the Chinese calligraphy. I have no idea. Actually, I, I bought this in, uh, in Taiwan. So uh, if you can tell me what it says, that'd be great. That'd be wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Orchestra Tutti is over. Here we go.
two bars of orchestra tutti for some um, for some questions here. Uh, Jackie is asking, uh, well, saying sounds amazing. Thank you very much. Um, have you made any changes in your approach since your last performance of Schumann? Yes, absolutely. I mean, I've had a lot of time now during Corona um, and I've learned some new pieces in my repertoire. And I feel like whenever I learn a new piece, uh, it influences my older pieces uh, quite substantially. Um, now, you wouldn't think that learning the Sinfonia Concertante by Prokofiev has a lot of influence on uh, Schumann, but uh, I do find that there is an influence uh, in the way how um, Prokofiev treats intervals, and I was trying to find a similar sort of interval theory uh, in Schumann's music. Actually, today I was practicing, um, you know, to, to feel the distance of thirds and fourths and how Schumann uses them differently to express different emotion. So, uh, so yeah, definitely, I, I try to change the piece all the time. Otherwise, why practice, right? I mean, you don't just want to get a piece up to um, performance level, but you also want to constantly develop the piece. Um, and, you know, so these pieces stay interesting for, you know, five, 10, 20 years. Um, and I've been playing Schumann first time in 2007, I think. Um, so yeah, 13 years of constantly trying to come closer to some truth. It might not be the truth, but some truth. <laughs> okay, but Jackie, thank you for your comment. Um, um, Andrew is asking, what is your favorite movement of this concerto? I think the great thing about this concerto is how he uses similar thematic material in all the movements. And so what I love most about this piece, first of all, is its beauty. Um, but second of all, I love that um, all the thematic material is sort of interwoven uh, through, the, through the movements. Um, Jackie's asking, how do you get yourself in an appropriate emotional headspace for your practice? I have been struggling with generally feeling the character's emotions beyond the superficial level. Um, yeah, you know, Jackie, I can really uh, sympathize there with you. Uh, it is not always easy to immediately come to the right um, place emotionally uh, when it comes to practice. But what I do um, recommend is that you show genuine interest in what you are working on. If you show genuine interest in the intervals, genuine interest in the harmony, genuine interest in what kind of sounds can I make on the instrument, then you don't even need to try to create a certain emotion because the emotion is going to come as a benefit, as a, as a byproduct almost. Um, so I feel if you, yeah, if you really show genuine interest in the material and in what is on the page, then you will be rewarded with emotion and um, honestly, I've not had success by trying to create an emotion before I practice. I feel like um, that always leads to sort of a false expectation. And as you say, it, it keeps me on a superficial level. Um, yeah, so, so that's, that's sort of my, my thought on that. Um, and you, Suga, is asking, what is the hanging scroll on the left wall, um, Japanese calligraphy? No, actually, it's, it's from Taiwan. So, um, and I don't know, maybe it is uh, Japanese calligraphy. I don't know. Um, but if someone of my esteemed viewers <laughs> can decipher this, you're very welcome uh, to leave a comment. And um, until you have deciphered it, I am going to play the third movement for you. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Schumann Concerto. And I see that we have a lot of comments here. Um, Ruth is asking, what mic are you using? I'm using my, um, what is it, a Zoom H4 and Pro. Um, and I use the output to go into my little um, Atomos recorder here. And then I send that over with HDMI to my computer. Um, but yeah, uh, I find that the Zoom microphones do a pretty good job. Um, of course, the sky's the limit with microphones, but uh, I think for online purpose, it actually works quite well. Um, let's see, what do we have here? Um, Yusuga is asking, um, what kind of sound is good for you? Is, this, is the sound rich in overtones? Um, well, that really depends on the emotion that you want to convey. Uh, sometimes you want to have a really flat, nasty sound. Uh, for, um, for example, some passages of Shostakovich come to mind. Uh, Shostakovich Concerto or even Shostakovich Sonata. But um, for Schumann, yes, I'm definitely always trying to find um, where, do I, where do I find extra overtones. And sometimes the overtones are um, on the open strings that are resonating with the notes. So if I, if I play something on the A string, I make sure that, uh, you know, if the intonation allows that uh, the C, G and D string are ringing uh, because they usually offer um, an extra amount of overtones. But of course, you have to choose a bow stroke that allows for the notes to ring. Um, and uh, yeah, but I mean, to answer your question, it really, really depends uh, what the emotional quality is that you're trying to transport. Um, great. So, um, thank you all for tuning in. Um, and we'll do this again soon. I think tomorrow, maybe I'll do it on Facebook. So if you guys want to tune in, I'll probably post something. Um, for me, this is awesome because I get to have an audience and, and sort of dry run, uh, my Truman Concerto. And as you saw in the third movement, there are quite some spots that I have to uh, revisit that didn't sort of make themselves um, apparent when I was practicing. So I'm very grateful to you that you lent me your ears. And um, as always, uh, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you soon. Bye.